This, this talk has almost nothing to do with Perl. Um, I decided to do it when they said there were two empty slots on Wednesday, and, and so why don't I come up with something to fill them up with? This is low-level bit wrangling and on-disk file formats. Um, it's part of the Cyrus IMAP email server. I'm Bron Gondwana. I work for Opera and previously for Fastmail doing email stuff. And for the last few years, I've been spending a lot of time hacking on old C code in the Cyrus IMAP server. So the code base is 20-something years old, and it's been worked on by lots of graduate students over the years, because where do you get your free work from at a university? So it's varying qualities. Um, the data formats, there's lots of different custom binary data formats, but one thing is the key value databases, which we have three rough classes. Barclay DB, which either we're not using it correctly or it's actually not that good because it's been the source of most of the problems over the years, particularly for people upgrading a new format of Barclay DB comes out. It doesn't have any way of upgrading cleanly. It doesn't handle the old formats. It sucks. We had skip list, which I'll talk a bit more about skip list in a little bit, which had lots of issues in it until about five years ago when I sat down over a few months and one by one worked out what was going wrong and fixed the issues with it and some crappy flat files that we don't care about. How many of you have heard of skip lists before? A few. All right. A brief guide to a skip list. It's a linked list with additional linked lists kind of randomly scattered throughout it so that you can, in theory, get a log n look up. You'll look at the first top one, discover there's nothing else, look at the next one, skip along until you get either a key that's after what you're looking for or the end of the list, and then you track down until you eventually get to the bottom list and find where you're looking for. So it's a fast way of finding your way along a linked list. Usually implemented in memory, but in our case, it's implemented on disk. So this is the file format, roughly. It has over here, this whole section is the format of a record on disk. It stores the type, key with a length in front, value with a length in front, some pointers to further nodes, and the magic value minus one, which says we've hit the end of the pointers. It's an unsigned 32-bit. So these are all 32-bit. They're all in network order. It's fairly portable. It's fairly good. There's also a delete, and there's commits, because it's transactional, and you need to find out where everything was. This has served us pretty well. It has some weird stuff where the first set of items are in order. They've been put on the disk in alphabetical order, and then other stuff gets put on the end. So how this works is you append a new record to the disk, and you then update the back pointers for the previous records at each level so that it's stitched into your linked list. So everything is a bunch of offsets on disk saying, skip this far along the file, and you'll find the next record in order. That was fine. And my little notes here say it's all good, except we had some issues with it. Some of the bugs that we ran into, I don't know if you've run into the issue with flock that if you open the same file twice in the same process anywhere, and you lock it, and then you unlock one of them, the other one gets unlocked as well. Yeah, the code didn't handle that at all. That was a cause of a lot of our problems. All the old Cyrus code mmaps the whole thing, and then it has macros that just read something, seek along. Back when we had that data structure, it would actually there was a, one macro that would read the first item, work out the length of the key, skip that, read the length of the value, skip that, count how many items there are in the end by looking for the minus one. All this was done in one macro. If it ran past the end of the map, it just crashed. So, had to fix all of those things. Random Linux kernel bug, 64-bit kernels, map reads over a page fault, it would return early to user land, and you would read 8 to 16 bytes of zeros, randomly in the middle of your map file. 64-bit only for around about five revisions. It took me a week of debugging this crap and finally got a test case that I could send and within 10 minutes Linus had jumped on it, found out who was responsible and told them a new one because that's what he does. And it was fixed a day later. So yes, pushed all that back through the dodgy old CVS we had. But there were some things we couldn't fix with this file format and this is where Not Invented Here came in. 32-bit size limits. There was a stamp file that you had to touch and I'll explain why later. And once all that happened, there was a very slow rebuild if you had to restart and you thought you'd crash because you had to scan through every single record and update all the back pointers. 
We worked around that by touching a, a file that said we've had a clean shutdown so that at least startup wouldn't spend hours reading giant database files because we started adding giant database files. I wrote a new skip list that didn't solve that problem. So we decided to, well, I decided to write a new one. So the goal was 64 bits, checksums on all the content because that's, like I said, that little random zeros bug. It was only that it occasionally hit the navigational things that we found that was crashing. Otherwise, we would have just had random corruption all through our data and not fixed this before it was one machine that was only replicas where all the crashes were, so we didn't lose anything. It has to be fully embedded in one process. It has to work with just one single disk on-disk file. And I wanted to also be able to read it without having to update a header with a new timestamp just for the skip stamp stuff. But it needed F-Sync to work, obviously, and you need some sort of guarantee from your file system that some stuff writes. But minimum guarantee is one block writes cleanly or not at all, and F-Sync works. So this is the new file format. And as you can see, some of the rubbish has gone away. I've simplified so that the dummy is just another record. The dummy is that first record you saw at the start with pointers to every single level. You have to have one of them so that you can, if you, something comes in with a higher level than you've ever seen before, you have a place to put that initial pointer. And then all the records are exactly the same format. They start with a very small header. It's just 64 bits and we've crammed four of the initial things in there to try not to waste too much space. And then there are extension blocks if your key or your value is bigger than 32 bits or 16 bits. So it all fits anything you want. All the pointers are at the start and there's a CRC at the start and a CRC at the end. Yay! So, what did I add here? <laughs> I'm not sure why I put this one in. Oh, yes, just the details of the header that rather than working out before we had that log end in the middle and when too much stuff had been added on the end, you have to repack the whole file because you can't ever delete anything from one of these. They're append data update pointers. So every so often you have to rewrite the whole file. Giant sweep and clean garbage collect. And that's still how it works today. But this time we actually keep track of the predicted size so it keeps track of what it's deleted and what it's added so it can repack when it knows it's, what it will actually get back out of it and a generation number so that you can tell if locations in your file have changed. When it does a rewrite, it increments that. So I thought, great, we can now get a safe change just by rewriting the header, saying that it's dirty, appending the data and committing again. Fantastic. You need to F-sync three times to guarantee this. This all makes sense so far. I don't know if I'm running far too fast. I, I only wrote this over the past couple of days. But basically, you need to get that dirty flag down to disk before you touch anything else, so you never get a read where some random stuff's changed, but you don't know it's dirty. You then append everything, and you have to make sure that's synchronized fully consistently before you take away the dirty flag again, because otherwise, if you get a crash halfway through, your file system goes, oh, forget about those blocks at the end. The blocks at the start, well, I wrote them down, so. And then finally, you write your header dirty zero and you have to F-sync again so your application can guarantee it actually made it to disk. One problem, if the host crashes during the append, you have pointers updated already that point past the end and you can't reconstruct your original chain. So in this case, you go through and you read every single record and you update the pointers. That takes, with skip list, we're finding it took about half an hour on our big 300, 400 megabyte databases on a busy server. And half an hour for someone's mailbox to be locked, not good. So the solution to this was actually to keep two separate linked lists. And this is a very busy slide. But the important thing is you always keep one unbroken chain of links through the old state and then you update only the higher pointers and an additional pointer that will give you a new pass through, and then when you commit, you actually know that that new set works. So you have an old state and a new state at every single time. And what I've done here to give you an idea of what this looks like is actually taken some snapshots of dumps of real files. But do you have any questions so far about this format? I wrote a Perl read-only version of it, um, which is quite a lot simpler than the C code, so I will publish that somewhere as well. Yes, no? Does it all make sense? Am I insane for writing my own key value store? 
<laughs> you won't answer that question. Yeah. So this is a dump of just a header and a dummy record. And you can see the two bits I've highlighted in green up there are the two low-level link lists. So there are two identical, at the moment, lists. Then we add one record on the end. It's level two, so there's two pointers here that take us forward to that first record. So one of those first links, thank you, has been added and the other one hasn't. Taking this same database and adding a couple more records. I've added B and then I've replaced A with a new value. So you can now see that the pointers to the first record have been updated. There's that 150 there that is now removed. The stuff in italics is data that's no longer actually reachable, but it's still obviously there on disk. So the second point has been updated to point to the end. The first pointer was still there. So if we had crashed halfway through reading th writing this, we would know to truncate because there's a length stored in the header and that length hasn't been updated yet. Truncate to that point, go through, look for pointers past the end of the file and zero them out so that the old pointer is now the correct one for further use. So that's how that worked. We then append another record that goes after that and you can see this one was level three so we updated the back pointers there but we also went all the way back to A and put that line across so we can skip over B at level three. If you're looking for C, you'll come along, you'll skip past, you'll come to A, which is level four, you'll then skip past B and find C at level three. It's a bit small to really see the advantages of this, but you do get order login lookups and you also get fast reads. If you're doing a sequential read, there's always a forward pointer directly to the next record. So that's the advantage over some other formats there. And then finally, injecting another record, AA, between A and B. In this case, the level was lower than the level of A, so that was the only one that needed to be updated. And it could inject that just by doing one previous write, by updating the pointers on that record. And obviously, the sizes update. If I skip back one, um, you can see up the top there as well, I've highlighted the size there. Everything in italics, again, is stale. It won't be written into the new rewrite. So we've got the size now and the size presumed at next rewrite. And that's usually quite accurate. And that's actually all I've got. So this is, this is designing really low level stuff to sit at the bottom of the server, be very reliable. It's not the fastest thing in the world. Amongst other things, there's all those CRC32s. We check them every time we read every record and we rewrite them every time we update things, obviously, because I find when I'm dealing with people's email, robustness is more important than being a little bit faster. And it's all sitting on SSDs anyway, so <laughs> it goes reasonably quick. RAID 1 SSDs with a replica in the same data center and a replica in another data center. And that's it. The source code is all available online. It's all BSD licensed. There's a couple of thousand lines of C total, and it's quite easy to rewrite in other languages. I've already got the read-only Perl, and I'll probably have a writing version of that done in another few hours. Yes? Maybe. The difficult bit with that is it's quite embedded in a lot of other Cyrus stuff. It uses the Cyrus MMAP file APIs. It uses Cyrus retry write, which is a wrapper around write. You'd wind up embedding half of Cyrus in there just to make Perl talk to it. So cutting out just the individual functions and writing them in C, probably faster. But you can do it in pure Perl fairly easily with unpack. It's all network byte order. It's all very portable. And I was going to talk about the skip stamp. The point behind that was exactly as I said here. If you got a crash and the stuff you depended on the end wasn't available anymore, you would have pointers that point to nowhere. So you can't even see where they were supposed to go. So you have to read through item by item and basically re-add, rerun the full transaction history of everything that's ever happened on this database. And that gets slow. Yes? 
Yes, it runs around about half the speed of skip list. Um, it runs, Berkeley sits around about the same as skip list, a little bit slower with the usage that we do of it, which is just the lookups. For sequential reads, skip list is a bit faster than Berkeley, um, Berkeley hash anyway. And it uses around about 20% more space than skip list. But that's space we're willing to pay for in exchange for the CRCs. If you added CRCs to skip list, it would come to about the same space usage. Yes, I got it. Yes? I don't care. I, <laughs> when we got bought by Opera, one of the things Opera sysadmins tried to convince me to do was put all of this on a SAN rather than local disks. I've been pushing very strongly the other way. We buy two U servers with 12 disks, two SSDs, standalone, nothing shared. So we already have a replication protocol in Cyrus that allows you to replicate your changes to other servers in close to real time. And that's what we use. I don't like shared infrastructure where everything's on one machine. Um, we had a recently, there was a university in the States who had a giant SAN with Cyrus on it and they lost one disk and they were so close to their IO limits that it took them a, a week later when I finally got called in to try and help them recover from this mess. Everything was still totally melted down. People couldn't access their email. Once you share everything, yeah. <laughs> one problem, the whole system falls over. Yes? Are there any size limits for the value? 64 bits. If we zoom back to look at the format here, the header, which is this little block here, is only 64 bits. So it has a 32-bit limit for the value and a 16-bit limit for the key. But if this is 16-bit max or 32-bit max, it actually adds an additional 64-bit block here and another 64-bit block there, which has the length. And then that many bytes at the end, plus a bit of padding to round it up so everything's 8-byte aligned. So yeah, you can put 64-bit values anywhere in there. Um, obviously, the whole file will also be limited to 64 bits. That's probably enough. Cool. Thank you.